JP. Yeah. Does your wife go to you and ask you to go get groceries when you don't want to? You're yep. in the middle of playing a game or watching a movie or just chilling. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it drive you nuts, bro? Drives me bonkers. But as our duty as men, we sometimes have to go and get them damn groceries. Do we? I don't know. I heard that there might be a new option. Ooh. Instacart. Yeah. Yeah. If you use Instacart and use our promo code, you can get a free, what is it, JP? Free delivery on your first order over $35. If you use the show link note that we have for Instacart, which is down below, click that, sign up for it, get your paid account going, and you can get your first free delivery over an, an order over $35. Basically, don't order just eggs and just ask somebody to come bring it to you. That's a jackass move, right? Just get it all in one go. Get it all and be done. Get all your milk, your eggs, everything at the comfort of your own home. Right now, it's cold. I don't want to put on all my winter gear to go outside and go get to the store and bring it all in. I have to put on a COVID mask and all that nonsense. Let's just pay somebody else to do it. Sit at home. Continue that video game. Continue that movie. Chill and relax. That'd be so much easier. I mean, yeah. you got you got the power at your fingertips. Yep. Just... It's, it's tw 2021. Who does their own grocery shopping? Yeah. That's What's true. wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call instacart up they'll get a local shopper they'll connect you to somebody in your area that you can count on and sometimes they'll even get it there within an hour which is incredible it is it's like fast food that's, that's like so i can do it that's like almost like getting a pizza yeah but groceries healthy instacart instacart sign up sign up link below tell them truth or theory sent you <laughs> folk wolf pack <laughs>
you're a powerful individual. Uh, you have a cool story. We want to kind of get into that and kind of give uh, anybody who doesn't know who Dave Daly is, maybe you can give us a little breakdown on your background and how you got to where you're at right now. Um, yeah, first, I'll, do you have I'll anything? Bring... Do you have any cheers to you'd like to? Oh, yeah. Thanks for out. that, Dick. Uh, JP. Just today, uh, Monday, launched our e-commerce company. Uh, we have a, um, it's called Canine Super Supplements. So we have uh, 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 supplements for canine. So pumped about that. Very excited about that. I got a lot of good things coming uh, on the burners in business for uh, 2021, man. It's going to be, ep- 21, 22 is going to be epic, epic shit, man. So nice. I'm pumped about that. And uh, uh, definitely mimic what you were saying earlier about more and more people waking up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, starting to really see what's going on. And I think I think in the next three months, uh, it's going to be pretty dark, but necessary in order to show uh, a certain percentage of people uh, who they've been backing. Yeah. And what that would really forecast for them and their families down the road. Um, so I'm definitely pumped about that. Got some, I, we're going to have to lace off our boots and fucking bite down on the mouthpiece, man. <laughs> yeah, it's that time for sure. It is. So uh, quick question about the canines. What, do you have any dogs? What, what kind of dogs do you have? Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'm a big pit bull rescue guy. I'm a big pit bull advocate. Um, bull breeds, uh, working breeds. I, uh, back in the, the whole uh, reason I put together this formula, it's called Primal Power, is it mimics the raw diet. So back in the day, um, uh, I used to compete with, I had a white pit bull American bulldog. I'm from the East Coast. And uh, we used to uh, compete up and down the East Coast in weight pulling, bite work, um, uh, agility, all kinds of stuff. I worked with the uh, Philly Police Department and the canine units. And so, um, yeah, the, the, and the whole 30,000 foot view of the product that we have, or the two products we have, Flex Force and Primal Power, is my guy had a lot of internal issues, even though he was an unbelievable uh, worker. He still had internal issues. His nails would rip off and skin issues and teeth issues. And once I got him on the raw diet, it just literally turned around within 30 days. So I put together a product that mimics the raw diet. So if you're feeding the raw, it completes it. If you're feeding the commercial food, which has loses so many nutrients and and really good things through the high temperature process it'll actually complement it so that's kind of the thirty thousand foot view wow that's really cool yeah, yeah. that's a good idea too yeah we're dogs, pumped man yeah dogs yeah. don't really you don't think of it like that you just you know they eat their dog food and they run crazy and <laughs> but they're i mean they're yeah. workers just like people yeah Gotta feed it is the body. It, but it's like anything else right almost yeah. like bodybuilding uh jujitsu mma boxing right if you really start to dive into it, then you start to, you know, connect with people that want to really take it to another level. And that's what happened to me in the dog world um, back East. So yeah, that's I mean, cool. yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's awesome. So we're pumped, man. Yeah. That's a good deal, man. Because you think about the dog's natural diet too. It's not the shit that we feed them. No, <laughs> I'm, get, I'm guilty scraps. of that. Yeah. <laughs> get all the freaking corn loaded crap that's out there filler stuff basically they're basically just like humans yeah that's true conservatives that the the processed food right all that shit um so yeah i'm a big i'm a big believer um you know primal power works in the human world and the uh um canine world and i'm a carnivore guy uh through and through and it's been unfucking believable man Mm -hmm. yeah am i allowed Uh, to curse on here yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. we get fined twenty five dollars every time, but go for it, man. We got a big right. budget. We're stupid Checks rich, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is completely uncensored, man. Be cool. yourself. Open cool, up. Cool. That's what we prefer. Um, I actually asked. I had a dog business back in the day too, uh, several years ago. It didn't take off. It was called Tactical Chihuahua. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wanted it. <laughs> it was all barking, no bite. Oh. Hey, I, I've seen plenty of big tough guys run the other way when that chihuahua hits the door. Oh yeah, so. I did too growing up, man. It didn't matter. If it was barking and chasing you, they would run. <laughs> have you, have you ever been bit when you were doing deliveries? Yeah, I did uh, FedEx deliveries for almost seven years, and uh, I used to be very cocky about my uh, my ratio of not getting bit, basically, because. 
they, there's so many pussies in the courier world. Everybody's scared of everything. Scared of yeah. the dogs. You got a duck in your yard. They take off running. Um, I've had some pretty crazy situations happen, but I've only been bit twice by two dogs. Uh, one was a little dachshund, which he was warning me not to touch him. But I was like, I'm just going to touch you, man. You're just a little bitch dog. What are you going to do? I reached down and pet him. He went, <laughs> he's like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he bit my uh, fingers and broke the skin. It wasn't too bad. The other one was out in the country in Iowa. I was um, delivering to a big farmhouse. They weren't home. And they had a big uh, Great Pyrenees walking. And he was telling me, get the hell off my yard, barking, and just rope, rope, rope. <laughs> and I turned my back to him. I was like, we're good, dude. We're good. We're, you're not going to bite me. We're cool. Put the package down. walked away. And he bit me right on the ass. Boom. Damn. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> no big deal. I never reported that kind of stuff because that's what they're supposed to do. Dogs are doing the, their job. And I used to take uh, new couriers out and try to convince them, like, you don't have to worry about that dog that's foaming and hanging off of a chain right now, wants to chew on your face. Just ignore him. Act like you know him. If you talk to them like you know them, they get confused by it and they let they calm down. It doesn't matter what breed it is. Usually, if you, if you act like you're friends with the dog, and then they're like, "Wait, am I supposed to be mad at this person? Is this <laughs> one of my dad's friends? I can't remember." They, it works. I mean, they, they read energy, man. That's their yeah. survival instinct. They read yeah. energy. That and and that's just that's just a fact. And you know, for me, um, I love animals, but uh, dogs. I mean, they just. They got their, 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 I should, I was going to say their finger on the pulse, but they got their paw on the pulse when it comes to <laughs> truly unconditional, right? And um, their, their ability to come back, meaning, you know, because I, I work with your, you know, and help support rescues around the country. And uh, we're getting ready to, we're going to be launching this called the Pit Crew um, probably in 2022. And uh, because I spent 17 years in some of the most violent cities on the East Coast, Camden, North Philly, Southwest Philly, Trenton, Newark, no badge, no gun, no backup for 17 years. And I've seen some pretty, um, pretty wild stuff across the board, but also it's very, very uh, prevalent uh, dogfighting rings, underground dogfighting rings. And all these, all these pets that you see missing uh, a lot of times they're taken and stolen and used as bait dogs. And oh, I've heard of that. That's so horrible. What, well, when you see what they go through, but then when you can see when they get into the right hands, a little TLC, they just, it's unbelievable how much they bounce back. It's like they don't carry that baggage with them like we do. Right. It's yeah, just like, okay. It's a lot too, man. That's awesome. Fuck. It's just, it's so impressive. Right. When you can, as a human, you're like, why, why are we having so much, so many issues? Right. Yeah. They're just like, here, watch me. This is unconditional, man. <laughs> they, they got, they got the, the, the golden key to life. It's, this is a moment by moment game. Right. So if you're in a fucking funk, work on that next moment and, and you start to move out of it. But if you don't, it just gets deeper and deeper. And they, they got the fucking recipe, right? Yeah. We're just not paying attention. They're like, this is a moment of my moment game. You guys are supposed to be the smartest ones on the planet. Let me, let me, let me share some uh, <laughs> wisdom with you guys because you guys are fucking it up. Yeah, yep. no yep. shit. Yeah, yeah. pit bulls are a great breed, man. Uh, my sister-in-law has always had them. She's a rescue pit bull uh, adopter, whatever you want to call it. But uh, they are the, one of the sweetest natured dogs and, and most uh, – family protective like they just they they become a part of your family they're such a great breed yeah. and they're so solid too they yeah, like just the muscle oh, of the head man. on it oh man my guy was at his peak 72 pounds lean in shape and he pulled 900 pounds on a cart wow Damn. and you gotta you gotta remember right that's pulling 900 pounds on a cart they're all in their mind they're just coming to see you yeah. like they don't realize yeah i mean there's shit there's uh I think at the, in the back then, a fe, uh, hundred pound female, a red nose uh, pit female, on rails. Now you're gonna pull more on rail, more weight on rails than you are a cart. But she was a national champ at a hundred pounds, pulled thirteen thousand pounds. Wow, that's crazy, man! Wow, it's unbelievable, dude. Yeah. Un, their drive and determination and focus. It's just like, it's uh, yeah, I'm in awe. It's interesting. That's wild. What's the BBT behind you? What does that stand for? Brand Builder TV. 
Oh, so I, see the I was feed. telling okay. you, I had a, a show. We yeah. still have it, but um, uh, we have a, a, a YouTube channel as well. But I, I put it on hold once all this, you know, the, the political stuff really started to, to beef yeah. up. Because um, I also own and operate a uh, fire restoration business out here in Southern California. Nice. That's your uh, well, your your second one, isn't it? You you've done a couple. It is. Of those. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if you want, I could give you that thirty thousand foot view. Yeah, yeah. go for it, man. Background. Yeah, sure. if you don't mind, okay. we'd love to. Yeah, we'll take you all the way to the beginning. Let's so do it. Okay. I was uh, put up at birth. I was put up at, uh, for adoption at birth. Um, the first eighteen months of my life, I was in an orphanage in North Philly, and then uh, at eighteen months, I was adopted by two amazing amazing human beings um my mom and dad and they when they adopted me at 18 months they were in their middle 40s so my dad was a world war ii uh 82nd airborne vet and my mom was a stay-at-home mom but they went through the depression so my old man's philosophy in life was lace up your boots get the work nobody wants to hear it so i'm so <laughs> fortunate to um to, to have been raised with from they were really my grandparents age right two generations ahead so blessed to be raised in that that mindset just mm -hmm. fucking figure it out man nobody yeah. wants to hear it and uh you know one of the stories my both my parents had passed but i i i got them out here for a few years in socal they were born and raised in philly so when i told them i'm moving to socal they uh they thought i bumped my head or something <laughs> my old man goes what are you gonna do out there because nobody goes out there. What are you doing out there? <laughs> so, uh, but here's, I give you, I share this from stage when I do keynotes. Here's the mindset that I was brought up in. So my dad at 88 years old uh, had a, um, a um, what's that? Your heart. Uh, the Like uh, a pacemaker? Pacemaker put in, right? And ever since then, it just started to really beat him up, right? Physically. So he's going to, I knew he went to go to, he was going to the doctor to get a checkup and my mom went with him and uh, they're both, my mom was 87. My dad was 88 at the time, 88 or 89. And uh, I call, I call my mom. I go, ma, how'd the uh, appointment go? Well, you know, I, you know, okay, but it could have went better. I go, what happened? What's the matter? Well, he, my, your dad got really aggravated with the doctor. I go, why? What's the matter? Well, the doctor said to him, John, listen, you know, you have your pacemaker, you're 88, 89 years old. I, here, here's a, uh, uh, a, um, uh, <laughs> a, a handicap thing for your car uh -huh. and for your license plate so you can park up front. He goes, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? Because I'm not <laughs> a handicap. And he looked at him just like that. He goes, oh, no, no, I just, you know, I can give it. He goes, Doc, I'm not handicapped. So then my mom jumped in. She's like, listen, give it to somebody that really needs it. And the doctor was floored. Like he, he, I don't think anybody's ever told him, I don't want that handicap. Cause out here in Southern California, I think all you have to do is fog up a fucking mirror and get that <laughs> thing hanging from your, your license plate. I swear yeah. to God. But that was, that's his mindset, right? Was that just, let's do it. Let's figure it out. So very blessed. So, um, at 18 months, they, um, they adopted me and then, uh, you know, Second grade, I left back in the second grade, diagnosed with ADD, said I had a learning disorder, never graduated high school. At 19, I'm sitting in a jail cell looking at 8 to 10 if things don't go my way. Um, and that's just the first 19 years um, of my life. And then what happened was I started to, uh, I started to realize that, you know, that the, the traditional education system, because I didn't fit in it, fit in it didn't mean that I was broke. And I had a uh, mentor come into my life. His name's Tommy. And that's one of my keynotes. I talk about Tommy. And Tommy was a kid from the neighborhood, just like me, but 15 years older. Mm -hmm. And when I went in to see Tommy, Tommy had this unbelievable, successful uh, selling copiers and fax machines uh, door to door. And everyone that worked for him, including his office managers, his sales managers, and his general managers, all had the, uh, the big uh, certificates on the wall from their colleges that they graduated from. And Tommy was a kid from the neighborhood that wasn't supposed to make it. And then from there, uh, 
I've, I've been fortunate enough to have built and sold three companies at three different industries. And I also was very fortunate to have crashed one to the ground. <laughs> That's yeah, a learning experience on yep. its own, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, there's a win there's a window in time where there's not a university in this world that could have taught me what I learned in that. Uh, and it was a restaurant here in Southern California. And I and and even the people in that town when I would see them, they're like, How how were you able to bounce back so quick? How were you able to, you know, get back on your feet? And I just said, here's the deal, right? Here I I closed the doors shut everything down, went through a bankruptcy. But how, how I was able to leave that baggage behind is simple. Is I asked my I look myself in the mirror and only I can answer this. If I didn't do it, would I regret it? And if my answer was yes, I won. I can move on. And my answer was yes. If I didn't do it at that time, I would have regretted it. Yeah. Now I'm good, right? Now mm -hmm. I can just move on and leave that behind, but take all the lessons learned. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to look at it. You're kind of paid an experience. That's good. Oh, fuck. It's great, man. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's what we're here for, right? Right. right. Fuck, I, I, I don't want to fucking uh, crawl through fucking life walking on eggshells, hoping I make it to the fucking end where we're all going to be, right? No matter what you believe in, right? Mm -hmm. We're all going to be, we're all going to be dead. Yep. Right? So, what the fuck is the point of just tiptoeing through fucking life, man? I want to fucking go out scarred the fuck up, bruised up, banged up, <laughs> smiling like a motherfucker, man. That's, yeah. I do. That's the truth. That's, that's, uh, there's no, it's just a non-negotiable for me. Right. Right. Yep. There's no way out. We're all going to die. Make your story worth man, somebody wanting man, to hear it. Right? Let's have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. with that, how did you go from, being that type of entrepreneur type mindset and then getting into like this woke mindset that we're in now where we're aware of all the bullshit oh, and corruption going question. on. And so I was just telling David this. It's funny. I was on his show and um, except for this last election, I only voted one time in my life in the president's election. And that was at 18 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. Since then, I don't know what it is except an intuitive feeling that got stronger and stronger mm -hmm. that, and now I've, it's come to pass that I was right, um, and I listened to my gut feeling that I'm like, my, my fucking vote just don't count. I think, this is, <laughs> I think this is some bullshit here, right? And I'll give you an example of what I mean by it got stronger and stronger. As I was younger... I, maybe a big part of that too is that I didn't give a fuck, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, at, at a young age, right, early twenties. Uh, mm -hmm. Then as I got older, I started to see. And then what really started to get my attention was when Bush Jr. was really pushed into his into the presidency. I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but yeah, was uh, that against Al Gore? Gore? Yeah, he really won the election. Right. We all knew that from mm -hmm. the outside looking in. But these guys rolled in like the mob, right? They rolled mm -hmm. in like like you own the pizzeria and are like, look, we're going to take 30% of your uh, gross uh, for protection. Protection from who? From us. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. then that started like that. to, at least, at least it logged into my head, right? But I still just, and then what I started to do when Obama came in, was, and I just assumed he was just some geeky black dude that they got in for votes, right? Yeah. That's, that's what I looked at. That's, that's as far as I saw, but I specifically kept my distance from politics because I couldn't do anything about it. So then I'm like, fuck, I'm not, let me just focus on me, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, my old man, you know, he was, you know, listening to the, the regular news, right? I'm at, that's, that's what they knew. So then right. he would always, what do you think about this? I go, listen, there's nothing we could do about this. Just, I, I don't know. I don't care. That's how I was. Yeah. Just live your life. But here's what happened. The fucking crazy left and these fucking crazy motherfuckers <laughs> made so much noise in the fourth quarter, for me anyway, in the fourth quarter of 2017, 
is when I started the real beginning of the third quarter or uh, the middle of the third quarter into the first uh, beginning of the fourth quarter of 2017 is when I started to go, wait a minute, fucking wait a minute here. This guy has never fucking held office in his life, has made his fucking money on his own, right? Mm -hmm. And these people are going fucking bananas, right? Like fucking saying he's this, he's that. Like you, you, we always saw mud slung, right? But nothing like it was. That's what got started to get my attention. And then I just started to, then things are like, wait a minute, this, this ain't making sense. This ain't making sense. And, and I'm going to tell you guys, I didn't vote for Trump the first term because I didn't vote. And I also said, people were like, you're going to vote for him. I'm like, and I had actually met him years ago when I was in my early twenties, I was work security at the Atlantic city convention center for all of his fights. I was walked him and Steven Skull down to their seats. Great guy. He was with Marla Maples at the time. But people were like, you're going to vote for him? I'm like, you know what? No, because I don't know if he's going to be a good president. And I'll be honest with you. What the fuck? What? I don't even have a definition of a good president, right? <laughs> to be honest with you. So, but I started to, it. all the noise wasn't adding up for me, right? And then I'm like, well, I don't know. It doesn't seem like, it seems like he's trying to do the right fucking thing. And then, then it just, then it just, once I get, once I get driven and focused on something that I care about, then it's over. Then I, I can't get enough. I'm fucking just infatuated with it. And that's yeah. where I'm at with this. So it's all pretty relatively new for you on this side of uh, being the truth seeker. 9-11 didn't like uh, spark you like a lot of the truth seekers? No, I took, I took what they said uh -huh. for their word, right? I'm thinking, okay, um, you know, uh, ice or you know uh not before isis what was the other one the taliban taliban and all that shit. Yeah. yeah i just took them for the word right that that's uh -huh. what it was i did the one thing that i that started to log into my head too and remember i specifically pushed away yeah because i couldn't do anything about it right so i thought instead of getting frustrated which i'll be honest with you guys it fucking saved me from 20 years of aging if i would have dug into this when obama was a fucking president seriously it would yeah. fucking made me nuts right yeah. so i'm okay. glad i'm glad i was asleep during yeah. that fucking train wreck right yeah. Yeah. um but one 9 11 didn't hit me like when they couldn't find the fucking bombs remember when we went over and there were no fucking underground or whatever. Yep. Is yeah. that what you're talking about? The, the, the Bush said that there was yeah. bombs or right. whatever. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that was like, all right. First of all, this motherfucker didn't get in there legit. Now he's doing <laughs> yeah. all this and things aren't adding up, right? And then, and then I noticed that things got hushed real quick. So then what that did for me is confirm that I still don't have any power, right? I still can't change anything. So I kind of went back into that hibernation and just focused on me. Yeah. Which is easy to do and probably, probably the best thing to do for your own sanity. But uh, my brother and I talk about this a lot because he's more on the, I'd rather just go back to sleep. Kind of just, it's overwhelming. There's nothing you can do about it. It can ruin your life, but I'm so deep in it now. Like I, I can't go back to sleep. Well, I feel like it's is, our responsibility. Yeah, you, we get to bring you guys got to admit though, this is different. We're at a different time now though. Yeah, we're, no, we're, no, this is a completely different time yeah. than 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is now or never shit, mm -hmm. right. right? And and we realized, or at least I did, I realized what Trump's speech was. This is not another four year term. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So I'm now fucking just every day. It's part of my life. Yeah. Same here. What's your gut tell you, uh, Dave? Do you think we're going to be split into two nations? Do you think we're going to uh, go civil war? Or do you think? No, I, well, I think there's going to be pockets of civil war. I think we have a really rough road for the next few months. Um, and I think, uh, but, but I, at the end of the day, the military is in charge and Trump from the outside in, and I tell David this all the time, 
if anything, over the last four years, they've earned our, they've earned the right to give them the nod, right? To say, listen, we know you got this. You've got us this far. When you're talking about the biggest, most powerful, influential um, 13 families that this planet has ever known. And this 5D, this 5D fucking chess match that <clears throat> we're watching play out in real time, none of us from the outside looking in can even remotely comprehend the, le the, the depth, the width, and the moving parts to this, and the moves and counter moves on a fucking, on probably hourly, minute by minute, sometimes basis. Absolutely unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I answered your question, but that's that's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Where are you at, JP? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know. I mean, yeah. that's with the lights going off the other day at the uh, where was it? The White House and the um, what was the other? location yeah, the, the monument monument yeah yep. that's man that, that's some red flags some shit's going down <laughs> i think well, the military, I, mean, I think but, they're arresting people personally i know we all kind of been talking about that a lot in the q side of it all but it, it feels like people are getting pulled out here's the thing like i hope you guys were just saying right when you asked each other and you're like well, i don't know i really don't know we're not supposed to know yeah this right. is a 5d chess match that if we knew it wouldn't be a 5D chess match because we're on the outside looking in, right? We're, right. we're limited Great to, point. well, think about this. We're limited to real information, right? And then on top of trying to figure out if it's real information from the outside in, there's also disinformation on purpose, Yep. right? Yeah. So again, we're not supposed to fucking know. That's what people, do. that's the level of this fucking game, right? The, the level where we're at. But I also believe if you're willing to dig deep enough, if you're willing to pay attention and use your fucking gut feeling and also common sense, we are in, I believe, I believe this. I believe that we are in complete control. We've been in complete control for over four years. Um, and when I say complete control, I believe that um, we, by Trump backing the Fed into the Treasury, we have the fucking money. We have the fucking power. And then when you add that in with the NSA that has everything and Space Force, we're the 800-pound motherfucking gorilla. And if we weren't, we <laughs> would have a fucking China flag flying right now. We are the baddest motherfuckers on this planet or else we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now. Is it going to be a bumpy road? Damn right. Is it going to be dark and ugly? You're damn right. Um, but it's what we're going to need to do to get through the other side. Hmm. Well said. Thank you. That pumps me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it makes Ready to sense. Punch JP. You know why? Because it resonates with you, right? This is yeah. because it's, it's, it's like the fucking... I tell people, it's like the, the, this mask bullshit, right? With this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. I tell people, I go, this is remedial common sense because it makes no fucking sense, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to walk into a restaurant with a fucking mask on, walk two feet over, sit down, put, take the mask off. Then yeah. when you go to the bathroom, you got to put the mask back on. That's what, This is remedial common sense because it makes no sense. Right. right. But it also shows you the power of fear. Mm -hmm. Right. And what the manipulation that fear can do when it's used right. And that's what, listen, man, that's why universities, traditional education, traditional fucking um, religions, politics control every they control everything by fear that's exact that's exactly what a dictator is fear yeah. that's what a bully is fear right and what we're doing is we're stepping up to that bully right and a bully is a big facade a bully 
knows that if you find out how weak they are, they're going to be, they're going to be shown, right? Everyone's going to see that's where we're at right now. We're getting our fucking lunch money back from that fucking bully. Yeah. Yeah. That would it's, it's, a, it's a truth. Yep. But think about this. If we weren't the 800 pound gorilla, do you think that Trump was going to go down to the wall in Texas and give China the fucking bird? <laughs> huh? Do you think he's going to go down to, what is it, last week, week and a half, he went down to the yeah. fucking border. He yeah. said, you got 250,000 troops? He's, he, he's, he's motherfucker was Doc Holliday. He goes, say when. <laughs> <laughs> Say when, motherfucker. Yeah, no, it's but it's the truth. But that's what we have to look at, right? Yeah. When we start to get overwhelmed, and the people that are in fear and overwhelming are not taking the time to do their own research and think for themselves, mm -hmm. right? And think for themselves. Um, and you know, listen. If you want to, if let me give somebody the fucking. You want to get scared of something? Be fucking terrified of the motherfucker driving in his car at this time with a goddamn mask on. That's who you want to be afraid of because that motherfucker will give everything up. Yeah. You get 100%. that? Yep. Even, yep. even being fucking born in, in this liberty. Yeah. Still willing to give everything up. That's mm -hmm. who you want to be afraid of. That's who you want the fucking real. That's who shouldn't allow to be reproduced. They shouldn't allow to reproduce. You know why? Because we should follow fucking nature. Nature calls the fucking weak. That that motherfucker's weak. There's my yeah. rant. <laughs> Intensity. <No kidding. laughs> so this, in case you want to know how I really feel. Yeah, I mean, don't don't sugarcoat it this time. Tell no, us for I got to I got to get out of my shell a little bit. <laughs> Come on, man, relax. We're all friends here. Just tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> but. Honestly, man, people, people that are awake, if you want to be afraid, be afraid of that mother. And check this out. How many people that aren't wearing masks, like myself, get the dirty looks, get the whispers. Now yeah. they fucking think that they can police you. Yeah, no. that but happens think, all the but, time, too. But think Grocery about store. how quick that happened, dude. How they literally crashed the economy. Yeah, yeah. And they still, the ones that wear the mask too, man, they eat that shit up. Anything they're told on mainstream media, they're like, oh, this is what we got to do. We got to, these are the rules. Yeah, we got to do the rules now. We got to beat it into these that's barbarians scary, who dude. don't want to wear masks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's fucking scary. So yeah. I believe, to get back to your other, your ultimate question is, yeah, I think there's going to be pockets of civil unrest. No question. Right? Just mm -hmm. even on that level with the mask bullshit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think uh, next few months, man, but ultimately they're in control. And um, they, I also know that they know that it's a fine line, right? There's a line where there's no return. <laughs> and then there's a line to where you have to, you know, the old saying, sometimes you can't tell people you have to show them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of curious to think how, what, what other countries, how they react. If there's people just like us that are like, why are we doing this? Why are we wearing masks? This oh, is all ridiculous. Uh, on, my, on my social media, absolutely. And, it, yeah. and think about this. Over the last three years, three and a half years, you've seen video, you've seen pictures of <coughs> um, different countries where they're raising our flag. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're yeah, man. No, no human being wants to be treated like this. Even when, when Hong Kong was going through all their stuff, they were holding up flags saying, you know, U.S., you got to get on board or you're going to be in this exact same position. Yeah, There's, they know better than anybody. Yeah, look where we were <laughs> <Yeah>. at. <laughs> Protesting, I mean, going wild already. I mean, let's face it. Fucking Canada is about 13 minutes away from straight up fucking socialism and communism. I mean, yeah. they're completely sold the fuck out by their people, by their the, that fucking Trudeau. I mean, yeah. they're fucking completely sold the fuck out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's... it's um. Yeah, we're, we are in, but think about how blessed we are to be able to fucking witness this and be a part of this. I say this to David all the time, like, fuck, man. I catch myself going, this is, this is the most epic time. Like, we're talking about a, a, an awakening and a change and a direction that the planet has never saw ever, ever. Yeah, 
mm-hmm. ever. Very true. It's what you, it's God damn. I got a question leading on to what you just said, but uh, the, he keeps referencing David. Anybody who doesn't know, we were talking about oh, it before we started David. recording. That's yeah. uh, David Nino Rodriguez. He's a mutual friend of ours. He'll be on the show soon. He's been on Dave Daly's show uh, and vice versa. I think you guys have both swapped too. Um, the, their conversations are very entertaining and inform- informative. You got to go check that out. So, yeah, uh, we'll, I love uh, listening. If you want, we'll, we'll come on together one time. Yeah, that'd be great. I was thinking that you guys, you're both very intense guys with a lot of passion. It'd be awesome to have you at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, to see you guys get in tell, a disagreement. Tell me, uh, We're going to bring blew- one liberal on just so we can mix it up. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, man. We'll, we'll tag each other in, me and David. Um, oh, beta male is just going to come on just to <laughs> his part. <laughs> I, know, uh, I know he had said to me today, he had his, one of his lives today, and somebody was breaking his chops. He said he just snapped on him, man. Yeah, I watched so, that. It was. Oh, you did. I, I saw it. I was like, "Oh, there's that heavyweight fire, man. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's intense, man. You don't want to get on his bad side. No. Big boy. He's good people, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Um, I wanted to ask you a personal question. Uh, where are you at with uh, faith? Like, are you a spiritual man? Do you believe yeah. in God? Yeah, I'm spiritual. I believe that we all came from source energy. I believe that uh, uh, we there is no heaven and hell. We created on earth. Um, and I believe oh, wow. that uh, we are all um, source energy and we are all one with God. And uh, that's why we have intuition. That's why there, we can read energy. That's why we could read facial expressions, right? That's, a, um, that's a, a big part of what we are gifted with. But so many people in society don't, it, it's listening to your intuition. I call it your inner GPS, right? It's just like a muscle. If you stop using it, it becomes un- weak and unreliable. If you keep using that muscle, it becomes stronger and much more reliable. And our intuition is our ultimate GPS in life, right? How many times have you said to yourself, you know what? I probably shouldn't do this. And you did it. And you're like, motherfucker, I know. Oh, yeah. right? Or <laughs> Definitely. I should just do this. Or you walk into a room and you go, yeah, I don't know, man, something's not jiving, right? right. Or right. I'm not digging this person. Or like me and David, fuck, I, I told him, I feel like I've known since fucking grade school, right? <laughs> we do just connect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and that's, that's what we're built with, right? That's, that's who we are as human beings. But we, str- we forget that, right? So many people, and then it becomes weak and unreliable. Then they just, they're like a buoy in the ocean. Whatever fucking wave comes by, whatever someone says, their whole fucking world is upside down and, and everything else. And one of the things that, um, so I have a book uh, I wrote back in 2016 called Fearless is Bullshit. And um, I bring that up because when I speak from stage in personal development, I speak on, um, you know, how to identify and break through those fear barriers, right, that we all have. And the biggest fear that people have, bar none, no question asked, is what other people think, right? Being yeah. judged, what mm-hmm. other people think. It's just a fact. Mm-hmm. And here's what I tell people. Here's a hack to, to crush that fucking fear barrier every single time. Live your life through pure intention. So what I mean by that, if I use a word or a sentence that offends you, but my intention is pure to give back, that's mm-hmm. on you. Now I could sleep like a fucking baby. You got to figure that out. Now, if my intention is to manipulate and control, that's a different human being. But yeah. if my intention is pure, I'm, I'm good, yeah. right? I, yeah. I can move on, right? Like, like, like with the restaurant, I had to ask myself that simple question. Would I regret if I didn't do it? Yep, good, move, let's go. Yeah. That's good. That's a good idea. I, yeah, that is good. I believe it's that powerful. too. Say what you mean and mean what you say. It's the, just intention, the, right? Mm-hmm. Pure intention. And then you let the universe do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. All of a sudden, the people and the circumstances start to come into your life when you live in... It's, it's just, life, I always say this, life is simple, not always easy, but the simpler you make it, the easier it becomes, right? So rule no, life's rule number one. When you do the right thing, it's always the fucking right thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Listen up, young people. <laughs> and, Take that and advice. Old people and yeah. middle. Honestly, you can change your path if you if you get onto it younger, man. Because we all, no, I'm no sure we all made stupid choices when we were younger. We're but, both in our thirties. Yeah, but but you got to remember though, that's part of life, right? That's yeah. that. That's. I always say this: the ones that are never going to make it in life are the ones that never had consequences. Yeah. Right. So you guys saw that meme go around for the last three fucking years when these Antifa motherfuckers and these motherfuckers and these, when it says, well, I guess the, uh, you know, the uh, timeout generation didn't work. Yeah, because there was no fucking consequences, right? My, my business partner, my ex-business partner's old man he had the best line of all. My, my business partner, my buddy, he's like a brother to me, one of uh, eight. And they'd be upstairs playing around, screwing around, making noise, playing football. And the old man would be downstairs. He'd go, whoa, I tell you about that noise. Keep it down. Second time, he'd go from the bottom of the stairs. He'd go, yo, don't make me come up there because I don't waste a trip. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the kid. So when there's no consequences, you don't yeah. fucking learn. Yeah. So if you're going to wrap your kid in a fucking bubble wrap, and then they come out into the real world, they're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. There has to be consequences. Yeah, when you when you step into the real world and then the real consequences hit you, it's like, holy shit, I was not ready for this. We yeah. don't. Do, we give zero fucks about that one that was wrapped in bubble wrap, right? Mm -hmm. When they come out into our world. Mm -hmm. The real world. Figure yeah. it the fuck out. Yeah. Right? But, but it's consequences, right? It's those when you fall down, get back up and figure it out. Keep going. And the other thing is... Uh, I always say that victims never win. So if you're going to be a victim, you're going to keep losing. Yeah. Whether, whether it's your race, whether it's your gender, whether it's your fucking education, whatever the fuck it is, right? If, that's, if you think that's, that crutch is going to help you, it's weakening you. It's a fucking excuse and, and you're Definitely. a victim mentality. And guess what? You know what I love about life's rules? Life goes, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> we don't give a fuck how much you fucking whine. You're yeah. still going to lose, right? Unless you learn how to lace up your boots, take responsibility, and at times bite down on the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, man, is uh, the victim mentality. I cannot stand it. I try, I try to think about that often to not ever have that kind of approach to anything because it is such an excuse. Like you said, it's just a waste of time. The world doesn't give a shit, and that gets you nowhere. You just go backwards with that bullshit. Yeah, you you just become so weak, man. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's 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 like when you broke, you know, I broke my wrist right when I was a little kid, and I had the cast on my arm for what eight nine weeks or whatever it is. Then when they cut cut it off, right, it's like two different arms. I, my muscles atrophied, right, because I couldn't I couldn't use them. They were being protected in this fucking cast. Yeah. Now I had to build that back up, right? And when you think you're going to protect your kid from every little fucking thing, you know, I wrote an ebook to it back in 2012. It's called The Monster Under the Bed. You guys are going to like this. So you're eight years old, you're 10 years old, you're in your room, the lights are out, it's pitch dark, you're under the covers, and you hear this sound, right? And you know for sure it's a big, green, hairy monster ready to come out and fucking eat you, right? I mean, we've all been there, right? I mean, yeah. I was there just last week. <laughs> and all of a sudden, an adult comes in, turns on the lights, you look under the bed, and what is it? There's no monster. You right. just have to learn how to turn those fucking lights on. Look under that fucking bed and keep rolling. Mm -hmm. It's all in your head. That is good. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You said something a minute ago that I wanted to ask you a question on. I'm trying to remember that. Um, uh, before if that comes back to me, I'll ask you, but um, with the religions, uh, spiritual God thing, do you think that we're in some kind of a biblical time period right now that like a prophecy of the end times? Do you feel like we're coming to that? Uh, you know, I don't know about that, but I just I know that there's a huge the, the only way for this to happen is an enormous energy shift. Right. An enormous yeah. energy awakening. Right. Um, so I think with the the help of the universe, the help of mass consciousness as it starts to move with the help of real world plans, right? That we're seeing unfold, 
which yeah. we call the five D chess match, right? So I think it's that combination, like anything else in life, right? If you want to build a business, well, consciously you need to start to make that plan and then focus on that and stay with that and and then adapt, right? As things come at you, if you want an unbelievable intimate relationship with your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you need to consciously move in that, right? You need to stay focused on that. You need to um, stay aware of that. So I think that's the best way for me to answer that question would be that. Okay. Well, I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. You mentioned the broken arm thing earlier. And it, it gave me flashbacks. So I broke my right arm as a kid too. I had the cast on. And I can remember to this day that smell is always going to stay with me when they cut that cast off and that nasty smell that's in there. And that <laughs> fucking itch. You got to yeah. get something to go down there. You can't. Yeah. Little clammy, pale, weak ass arm from Portland, <laughs> Oregon, man. Just a little bitch arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a crazy time. Well, we're going to jump into the six questions if you're ready, sir. And then do, do some plugs and cut you loose. Number one, if you had the power to make one law, which law would you create and why? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. I Have wouldn't. we had that before? I don't think you've had it. You, you like, you like laws the way I, they are. I, um, I you think. cut down I terms think, or anything like that? I think what happens is when there's, um, as you, as you, I think here's the deal in life, man, overall life, is you're either going downstream or you're going upstream. When you're going upstream, you're paddling like a motherfucker and you feel like you're not getting anywhere. When you can learn how to go, get in that flow, right, you start to go downstream and you let the stream take you. And that's the key to life is um, stop trying to create all these fucking boxes. Stop trying to create all this fucking structure, right, is and let life create the lessons for us because I don't need um, a religion to tell me if I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing as a grown adult, right? I don't need um, a, a traditional educational system to tell me if I'm smart or not, right? I've been on this earth long enough to know that there's all kinds of definitions of intelligence, right? right. And we've all met those different types of intelligence and we are part of that different types of intelligence. So I think at the end of the day, I always say, let the universe do the heavy lifting. Interesting. Well, that's a very different answer, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, what three words would you choose to describe yourself? Passionate, intense, and pure. Okay. Beautiful. Number three, what do you want to be remembered for? Just keeping it real, having fun and living life on my terms. Well, yeah, that's good. I think that's going to happen. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're doing it. <laughs> Number four, what is something that you like that most people don't know about you? Well, I, well, they do know I, I do love animals. I, I, I love to defend and protect the innocent. But at the same time, I pride myself on walking away from the ones that truly aren't innocent, but they're playing the victim mentality. Gotcha. So, yeah. the, so, so the, the innocent, right, mm -hmm. is that eight-year-old little boy that 12 year old little girl that's going through her third thing of chemo, right? And she's stronger than her whole family. Their family's ready to fucking crumble, right? Because they're seeing their daughter or their son, rightfully so. That's the one that I wanna be a voice for. That's the one that I wanna fucking defend. That's the one that I wanna protect, right? The little. Uh, dog that was stolen out of their back, the family's backyard and is now being used as a bait animal, right? That's who I want to be a voice for. That's who I want to protect. That's who I want to defend. Right. Dave, does that come, do you think that comes from uh, your, your beginning in this world, being an, an uh, adopted and 
brought in by good parents like that? Do you think you're trying to return that same powerful well, I, uh, I, example? I believe, again, I believe that it's, uh, that played a huge part. Um, and I also believe that being aware, right, of um, who you are, what you bring to the table, and then how you enhance your weaknesses as well. So give me an example of what I mean by that is people, I do keynotes from stage, right? Personal development. Uh, people ask me, um, well, wait a minute, how did, they look at my appearance, right? And uh, they say, how, how's a guy like you get into personal development in the spiritual world? And, and how it all started for me was uh, marriage counseling. I'm going through marriage counseling. The counselor was the most spiritual late. The first few uh, sessions, I go to my what my ex wife. I go, Michelle, this lady's out of her goddamn mind. She flew in some sort of magic carpet. All of a sudden, right? I start to get infatuated with personal development, the universe, and energy. And I just and I haven't st- and that was 2006, and I haven't stopped since. Right? I just I I love it so. Um, I, I mean, hopefully that, that answered your question. Yeah, that's really cool. I had a great experience with uh, marriage counseling as well. A few years back, the lady was incredible. Um, Dr. Catherine Elliott, I believe her name was. Yeah, she was an, uh, she was an incredible woman. And I, didn't, that, I, didn't, I didn't take it and do anything with it like you did, but I was very moved by her. <laughs> well, you did, but, but you, cause, because you're even talking about it and you're, yeah. and you're acknowledging that it made a difference in uh-huh. your life. You have done something with it, right? And that speaks volumes of who you are and where you were, where you're at today, and where you see yourself going, right? So that yeah. speaks volumes. Um, and, and, and the other thing is so many people think that, like I, I, I tell people, I was married and together with my wife. We were married and together combined 17 years, right? And when we split up and decided to, to go our own way, we split everything down the middle, my business um, that she helped me build, the, our properties. We split everything down the middle. And I, her dad was one of my best friends. He was a um, um, New Jersey State Trooper, a detective for organized crime. And before that, he was first horse recon in Vietnam. Wow. We were like this. I flew out three years ago, two years ago, and did his eulogy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my mother, my ex-mother-in-law texted me like three weeks ago. Hey, how's it going out there? Everything okay? I'm still so close with them. Just because we grew apart doesn't mean she's automatically a bad person, right? right. And vice versa. So um, I think I think that's a huge lesson for people to 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 understand, right? Um, is you have to you it, it's everything starts and stops with you. Definitely. That so if my, if I'm together, think about this. If I'm married and together 17 years with my ex-wife, we get a divorce and now I'm telling you guys she's a horrible person. That's a reflection on me. Yeah, I completely agree on that, man. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. so common, too. It's, it's the default that everybody goes to. Which and if is, it's not, what ha- where are we at? We go right back to that victim mentality. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's, if I hear somebody start talking about their ex in that kind of way, it's just a red flag for me. I'm like, all right. I, I've already got you marked as a victim and, a, and you're just a negative bastard because <laughs> and, 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 you were and, with that person. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's exactly it. So yeah. that's kind of, yeah, that, that would be my answer. If we have to split our marriage and I have to give up the truth or theory podcast, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to give up you to my wife. Okay. So yeah. she can have <laughs> my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two more questions. Number yeah. five, if you could have any superpower, which would you choose? Man, I'd be honest with you guys, man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No superpower. I, I think we man, have another everything first. we need. I think our, our intuition and reading energy is, is the superpower. It is the fucking superpower. It is the superpower. You don't want to fly? I truly... Hmm? You don't want to fly? Hey, listen, I, I guess. I don't know, man. I mean. I would have had yeah, you pegged for super strength or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? If, if you really push me, like, 
I would say, yeah, it's like the Hulk, right? So be yeah. able to leap, leap a building, right? Yeah. In a single, a single bound. But, um, but honestly, man, too many people overlook that, that fucking superpower that's, that's in us. It's, it's, it's our, it's our survival mechanism. It's our thriving mechanism. It's, but, but you don't, you forget that you have it and you stop, you start, you stop using it. Mm -hmm. And that's, then that opens the door to allow people's opinions to change your fucking direction. That's why dreams are crushed, right? Because mm -hmm. you allow, you don't listen to that intuition. You don't listen to that inner GPS. It takes courage. It takes courage. It takes a backbone. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes and the stronger you become. So there you go. Man. Coming from the monster motivator. <laughs> okay. Cardi has a superpower. Yep. That's why you don't yep. need one. Be the monster yep. motivator. You, and you guys do too, man. You That's really great. do. That's great. I feel I feel better about things just after this our talk here. Yeah, I was hoping that we would get that from you. I, I had a feeling we would, but uh, I hope the listeners get it as well because you're a powerful guy, and what you say is powerful, and and your approach to everything is really encouraging. Yeah, and you know what? The other thing too is interesting. You said that because I get people blowing me up like, "Well, you said this." You said I go on on my social media, and here's what I tell everybody. Even when I'm on, when I introduce, my, I get introduced on stage on a keynote. Whatever I say, take what works and throw out the rest. This is your journey, not mine. Yeah. Right? This is That's this is your our journey, podcast. not mine. <laughs> <laughs> take what works, throw out the rest. Yeah. And that. So at the end of the day, um, first of all. That's a great compliment, right? That you feel this energy and now it's raising your vibration, right? Yeah. Because it, it's such a win-win because it's raising my vibration as well. <laughs> then there's going to be people that just don't connect, right? Then there's going to be people that completely connect. I'll give you an example. David, we did that, that show together and I'm getting, you know, people blowing me up like crazy. A lot of great positive stuff. Same with him. But he said, you know, I guess somebody had reached out and said, you know, you guys are, you curse too much. You shouldn't curse so much. So, you know, you, you just got to be real. Keep it, keep it pure and let the universe do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. I get that same complaint. I have a dirty mouth, man. It's, I can't help it. It's just who I am. <laughs> it's how I express myself. Like the small exactly. Thing. It's just, yeah. exactly. It's just a word if, like any other word. And it's, just, the, I mean, if you don't, it's only as powerful it, as you let it be. Yeah. Right. And, and if, if yeah, well, I tell people, if I'm not your flavor, move to a different flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number six, last question. If you could know the absolute truth on one conspiracy theory, which would you choose? Oh, man. Well, first of all, fuck the, that title conspiracy theory because we know where it came from, right? That's yep. just a diversion, yep. right? We are the fuck. The con here's uh, here's a, consp a real conspiracy theory in case people are, are uh, twisted about this. In the world we live in today, uh, thinking and believing that a fucking diaper on your face, plastic gloves on your hands, and fucking hand sanitizer is going to replace your immune system. That's your conspiracy theory, you stupid fuck. Right? <laughs> there you go. But um, here's the best way for me to answer this. I can't wait. I can't fucking wait to get on the other side of this storm and immerse myself in learning all the fucking detail of this 5D chess match that was played out in real time. I'm talking about the real fucking details when they come out. I am going to be like if infatuated with that for years. So that's like my, the best answer. I can't fucking wait for this seriously to learn what they did, what they had to get through, what they had to, to, to figure out. What are the moves, the counter moves, man? Talk There's about so many it. levels to it. Oh, fuck. And, and the, the lives that are going to be saved, the truths that are going to come out. This is like the most epic fucking times, man. We are so blessed to be here 
and live this, man. It is, we are so blessed. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, conspiracy theory, I, I push that off to the fucking uh, mask wearing freaks. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> All right. Well, Dave, we'll, let's get to your plugs, man. We'll, we'll cut you loose. We appreciate you coming on the show. I do yeah. want to get a flex picture with all of us flexing for the thumbnail for the YouTube so this, channel. So this is, you ready? Yeah, this let's is get called it. The mon this is the monster motivator roar, right? So right. life is asking you guys one question right now. If you had an option, a choice, which you do, do you want to purr like a kitten or roar like a lion? Roar like a lion. It's on three. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> That's awesome. That's going to be our thumbnail. <laughs> Perfect. How's your vibration now? Good. Uh, we're going to be fighting after this. <laughs> <laughs> Taking this fool down. <laughs> uh, but uh, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on. I really do. Yeah, it's an open invite. You can come anytime you want. We, mm -hmm. We're very glad to have you on. Glad to have you as part of our network now. And uh, where can we find you and where can we get that book? So I'm easy to find. So it's uh, Dave Daly, D-A-L-E-Y-M-M, -M, like Monster Motivator, on all my social media. And same with uh, my website. And you can also find the book on Amazon. And I think uh, Wal uh, Walmart.com, or no, BarnesandNoble.com, mm -hmm. uh, the book is uh, Fearless is Bullshit. So, nice. Um, and that's my website as well, DaveDalyMM.com. So, Perfect. Yeah, I'm definitely not hard to find. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dave. It's been a lot of fun. We'll do awesome, it again real man. soon. Awesome roar. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah. Bye.